G'day there guys, I'm trapped in this room and this is a call for help. It's your main man Marky and welcome back to another episode of I Just Wasn't Serious About That, Am I the A-Hole? Um, sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie and get ready for another episode where my shiny forehead is in frame. Thank you. Posted by user, Am I the A-Hole 568865. Titled, Am I the A-Hole for kicking my fiancé's pregnant sister out? I, male 27, have a cat named Billy. He's my best friend and is very funny and adorable. He always makes me laugh and comforts me when I need him. My fiancé, female 26, had her pregnant sister stay with us after a boyfriend kicked her out. This cost me to work more since I pay for everything. My fiancé is currently looking for a job, but nothing was found. The problem started when her sister started complaining about Billy. She'd yell at him to get out whenever he's in the kitchen or the living room. She'd spray him with water whenever she wants him out and threw his food away. Once I saw it with my own eyes, I asked her to respect Billy as a resident of my home and stop hurting him. My fiancé said her sister never had a cat, so she doesn't know how to treat them, which is nonsense since animals just want to be left alone, but fiancé's sister seems to be doing it deliberately. Yesterday I came home at 6pm and Billy wasn't home. I went to look for him after my fiancé's sister said he left in the morning. I finally saw my neighbour bringing him to me, saying that he saw my fiancé's sister drop him off near an auto repair shop a bit far from here. I was livid. Billy was so scared he couldn't even eat. I confronted her, and she lied about not going anywhere, and asked my fiancé to back her up, but fiancé refused. She then admitted it, but kept excusing what she did by saying she was just worried for her baby, since cats aren't good to be around pregnant women. I blew up at her, and told her to leave. My fiancé said that's her sister and her niece slash nephew, and I should be more grateful. I argued with her about what Billy felt after what her sister did, but my fiancé called me unsupportive and was overreacting, and no harm in taking Billy to stay with a friend, since her sister clearly is scared of him. There's no excuse for her actions there, and I think hands down, she's just a bad person? Your wife by proxy is also a bad person for supporting, enabling, and then shaming you for confronting her sister about it? It's almost as if she wants the cat gone too, but just doesn't want to say it. I would seriously take a step back and consider your relationships with these people if that's how they react, to essentially them abandoning the cat out in the street like that? That's incredibly toxic behaviour. Not the a-hole. Now, in the comments, Yay Darkness says, Not the a-hole, ditch your fiancé too. You're paying for her, her sister, and for both of them to mistreat your cat. Seems like the sister isn't getting crap from your fiancé about abusing your cat. Cats can be around pregnant women, it's just the kitty litter that she needs to avoid, which if she was actually concerned about it, she'd know. You're not their financial piggy bank, and you get to have a pet. Keep the cat, lose the women. The cat is the only loyal one in this whole post. OP not the a-hole. The fiancé can follow her sister since she's so worried about her. Not the a-hole, kick them both out. It's really the only way to ensure Billy's safety. And yeah, there's no way the fiancé didn't notice the cat missing all day. Not only that, but she thought it was appropriate to invite someone who couldn't pay to live with them while not paying rent herself. The entitlement... It's much easier to end it before fiancé becomes wife. Congratulations on seeing their true colours before it got more complicated with marriage. Especially if you consider what will happen if fiancé ever gets pregnant herself. Will this be her stance then too? And, not the a-hole, holy cow. Kick her out, and frankly, I would think twice about marrying anyone that could defend that kind of behaviour. Exactly and excuse it by saying she's never had a cat before and she doesn't know how to treat them. What a crock of crap. She's never had a baby before either, and I'd hope she doesn't drop her baby off at the auto shop before slipping off back home. So what do you guys in the comments think about this one? Because I feel like it's a fairly open-shut case of not the a-hole, but there could be some weird opinions out there. 
Our next post is by user Disastrous Tie four four nine, titled "Am I the a hole for not babysitting for my sister in law anymore after she called the police on me?" So my sister in law and I have an agreement. She watches my kids three days a week, and I watch hers three days a week. This agreement has stood since March 2020 without issues, and any changes have been discussed weeks in advance. A couple weeks ago, we had an argument. The next day, I brought my kids to her house, dropped them off, and left. I didn't speak to my sister-in-law because when one of us is in a rush like I was, it's standard for us to just let the kids out, stay in the car, and drive off when you see the door open. I drove to work, about 40 minutes away. When I got there, I had about 20 missed calls and even more texts, all from my sister-in-law, all saying that she didn't want to watch the kids given our argument. Her first text arrived a little before I got to her place, but I didn't see it until I got to work because my phone is always on silent when I drive. I rang her, said I'll arrange to work from home, then come and get the kids. She said I have 45 minutes to get back to her place, or she would call the police. I told my supervisor the situation, and she said I could leave after I did a few things. This delayed me 20 minutes. When I got back to my sister-in-law's just over an hour later, she said she'd already called the police when the 45 minutes ran out. I then had to stick around long enough to tell the officer that I didn't abandon my children. There was just a communication issue. Sister-in-law and I had another shouting match later over this. I arranged other childcare for my kids, and I've been mostly ignoring her since. However. She reached out and apologized, and has asked if I'd be willing to go back to the old childcare arrangement. I've told her to go f herself. I work with kids. If I got child abandonment on my record, I would never work in my field again, which she knew, and her calling the police was a massive overreaction. So if she needs a babysitter, she can go whistle for all I care. She said that if I checked my phone. Talked to her that morning, or came back when I was supposed to. She would not have needed to call the police, and I did this to myself as she gave me a warning with that first text, and I could have checked my phone or spoken to her directly when I got to her place. All of which she said she would have done if she were in my position, given that we'd argued the night before. I've told her that if she thinks I'm babysitting for her, she's effing delusional and she's on her own. Because of my refusal, it's looking like she may have to quit her job because my brother and her would pay more for a babysitter than they would earn from her working. My mother and brother have both called me an asshole because there were no consequences to her calling the police, and that while she overreacted, she apologized. So if I really forgive her, I'll let us move on. This income loss would also mean that she, my brother, and my niece and nephew might need to move somewhere cheaper. That my brother might have to take on extra hours at work, and in an extreme scenario, they may even be completely unable to live independently, meaning they'd have to move in with her parents, who live several hours away. Am I the a-hole? It's really unfortunate that she wasn't able to realize just how privileged of a position she was in with you, helping out babysitting, and that she doesn't recognize that she was being crazy here. Twenty missed calls and multiple texts about enough. I'd say that's a gross overreaction to OP dropping the kids off before work. You know, because of the argument. And I feel gross by three phone calls if I'm in a sour mood with someone. Twenty is just toxic, unjustified rage. Calling the police is just worlds apart from a normal, justified reaction in this case. She knows that OP works in childcare, and she knew that threatening child abandonment would ruin her reputation and entire career that she's built up. If in fact her world does come crumbling down and they have to move hours away, then she 100% deserves it. She's an adult who's responsible for her own actions. I feel absolutely no sympathy for her. I would laugh at her if this, in fact, does happen. I only feel bad for her kids who have to live and deal with the consequences of her actions. Not the a-hole OP. You did and are doing the right thing by cutting off that childcare agreement. Now, in the comments, Unit Healthy says, "Not the a-hole. The only delusional person here is sister-in-law who calls the police on an essential worker out of spite." 
Let her struggle to find childcare or lose her job. You could have easily lost yours. And OP replies, In the name of full disclosure, I'm not exactly an essential worker, but my service has remained open, and I need to go into my workplace a few days a week to get confidential documents, among other things. It could have been bigger than your job. It could impact the custody of your kids. Your family is delusional if they think you're the a-hole. Your sister-in-law's actions have consequences and would be lucky if you ever let her close to your kids ever again. If your mom or anybody else complains that you do not look after the kids, they can look after them themselves. This, sister-in-law potentially screwed with custody of the OP's kids and all just because she was grumpy? Clearly, she had no concerns over the safety of the kids, but dragged the police into a personal argument. Had the police taken this more seriously, the OP might have had to explain herself to social services. What the sister-in-law did is completely unforgivable. That's the thing with tantrums and lashing out. She's not five. She knew what she was doing, but since it seems like nobody, apart from OP, holds her responsible for her actions... She didn't care about the damage she could cause. Even if OP would find it in her heart to forgive her, the fact that sister-in-law's judgement and reactions are this extreme makes her a bad person to babysit. Not the a-hole. Don't let her reel you back in. She still blames you for her calling the police, which means she isn't sorry and would do it again. Her losing you as a babysitter is a consequence of her own actions. Forget that part... That's essentially a non-apology if it ever was one. It's like, I've nuked this bridge, but I'm sorry if you're offended. Where's my childcare? If someone threatened my custody of my goddamn children, they would be lucky to only be dead to me. The real consequences of the police call that OP's family is ignoring. One, she had to leave work and look unprofessional. Two, she had to deal with the police, which is humiliating and a waste of police resources, since the kids weren't in danger or abandoned. Abandonment is a serious accusation. Three, her kids had to deal with aunt calling the police over an argument and suddenly cancelling childcare. Four, if an argument warranted her not watching your kids at the drop of a hat, what she did to you was larger and warrants no contact, especially since she gaslit you. And five, apologies don't warrant automatic forgiveness, especially a half assed apology too. Sister-in-law needs to live with the consequences of her actions. So what do you guys think about this one down in the comments? I would love to know what you would have done in this situation. And has this happened to you before? Our next post is by user TOA3577, titled... Am I the a-hole for kicking my three sisters out of my wedding after they came with their kids? My wife and I got married two weeks ago. We wanted a child-free wedding, so we've let everyone know. My family, in-laws, friends, and relatives, and everyone was okay with it, except for my family. I have three sisters, and all with kids from two to ten. My mum said it was illogical to not allow kids since, one... This never happened in the family, and two, my sisters live towns away, so the kids can't be left alone. After a lot of arguing and others getting involved, I stood my ground and they agreed to not bring kids. At the wedding, no one brought kids. My parents and aunts were already there, but then I saw my two sisters arriving with their kids. I immediately went to ask what's the deal. They began arguing with me when I said I won't be letting them in with the kids. I saw my older sister came with her kids in the car, and I was pissed. I asked why they decided to go against the rule and bring kids. My mum started yelling at me when I told my sisters they weren't allowed in with the kids. Everyone was yelling at me, and I had to get the security involved to make them leave. My parents and aunt left shortly after. They were so pissed at me. I got nasty texts later, and my cousin posted about my crappy wedding on Facebook. Days later, I've gathered the family and explained that what they did was wrong. I asked if I allowed my sisters with their kids. What message does that send to my in-laws and friends who wanted to bring kids but they couldn't? My sister argued with me and it turned out my mum told them to bring their kids and she would deal with me later. 
I told them they could have arranged for a babysitter, but my mom said they wanted to celebrate as a whole family. She said that I ruined my own wedding by making a scene, and everyone will always remember my wedding as a disaster, a crap show because of mine and my wife's child-free bullcrap. They said the only way to fix it is to have another wedding slash party and include everyone, especially kids. I called them unreasonable. I asked mum where the hell she got the nerve to even demand that. They blamed my wife and claimed it was deliberate. So I left, and they started talking to my wife trying to convince her that they don't approve of what happened and that they're giving us the chance to fix the situation, otherwise the relationship is damaged. This caused me a headache and I don't think that what I did was wrong. I just wanted them to have some respect for my wife and her family. These guys are just downright insane coming to your wedding and causing a scene like that. That would send my stress levels sky high and make me, I don't know, beyond pissed off that they think they could pull something like that on me on my wedding day and my wife? Hypotheticals? You're absolutely right they tarnished the memory of the wedding with that little stunt, but I would hope that they didn't ruin the day as a whole. Good that you had security to deal with it, but Jesus Christ... The fact they would go through with that and put the kids through that is another level of Looney Tunes I never hoped to encounter in my life. Not the a-hole OP. They deserved everything they got, and I don't blame you for kicking them all out. It's not an easy situation to handle, that's for sure. Now in the comments, but 5000 says, Not the a-hole. Your wedding, you set the rules, and the guest list. The kids weren't on it. They broke the rules intentionally, and they suffered the consequences. Stand your ground. And exactly, do not throw that second party, because it'll only send the message that you were wrong, and they were right, and you shouldn't have held a child-free wedding. Do not argue about it anymore. Just do the broken record thing. Keep repeating, you knew the rules and the guest list. You intentionally broke your word when you said you weren't going to bring the kids. It's not my fault you faced the consequences of your own actions. Just keep repeating that over and over again, no matter what they say. Not the a-hole, but do throw a second party. At the second party, don't invite mother or sisters. If you want to, invite their kids with the condition that they, mum and sisters, are still not invited not the a-hole, and your family is massively crappy. I'm betting this isn't the first time they've tried to bully you to get their way. Tell them to pound sand. Exactly. The fact that they agreed to the no kids rule but did it anyways, just screams they think they're better than everyone else and above the rules. It sounds like it was primarily his mum. Just bring them, I'll deal with the fallout. They are doubling down now because a second party will vindicate their poor choices. In addition to just repeating the facts, which is an excellent strategy, I would also recommend you telling them to get the idea of a second party, which I'm assuming OP would be expected to pay for, completely out of their minds, as that will not be happening. Further, they must apologize publicly. Okay, the publicly part is optional if you don't think that will ever happen, for agreeing to something that you expressed was very important to you about your wedding, and then going back on their word if you as a family are to get past this. The details of what it was they agreed to is irrelevant. They agreed, they lied. You deserve an apology. And tell them to keep your wife out of it. It was a joint decision, but they agreed to you. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. One... It's your day and therefore your rules. Two, your sister had plenty of time to arrange alternative childcare arrangements. I'm assuming this isn't something you sprung on them. Three, you've now set a precedent for letting your family know that they cannot run roughshod over you. And four, you're right. It would have been unfair to those that had to leave their kids behind. And our next post is by user Jessuk, titled... Am I the a-hole for telling my brother he's a crap boyfriend after he got mad at me for helping his girlfriend? So this happened a couple days ago with my bro and me, both 17, we're fraternal twins. His girlfriend lost her dog two weeks ago. I only know because he told us about it. 
So last Thursday, I was getting off the bus and going home after work. I saw her around the corner a couple blocks from my house, and she was literally crying in front of a light pole. I asked her what was up, and she said they found her dog, but he wasn't alive. So she was going around the neighborhood taking down all the lost dog flyers, and it made her emotional looking at the picture of him. She said she didn't think she could handle more of it because she thought she'd be taking down the flyers for a different reason. I asked her where Cody, my brother, was, and said that he could have come help her. She said he was playing basketball with his friends and didn't want to come. So I just told her to tell me the streets where she put them up and I'll go take them down. It's because I got where she was coming from. My cat died too, years back, and it effing sucked having to take flyers down and being reminded they're gone. I did that, and then Friday, Cody was giving me crap for literally doing her a favor, and I made him look bad for not going with her. I told him it wasn't a big deal, but he didn't shut up about it all weekend, and kept being moody with me. Then he was saying crap about keeping her away from me since I'm obviously trying to make a move on her. Like, what the hell? I have a girlfriend I've been with for five years, and I'm no cheater. So that's when I snapped at him. First, that he was the one who decided to be with his friends rather than her that night, and also, it's not my fault he's being a crap boyfriend, since he cares more about how I made him look rather than she got help with something. Cody got all mad and he went to his room. Now my parents are saying I was out of line and I need to apologize to him for insulting him when he's already feeling insecure. But I haven't because I don't think I should, and so they're acting like I was a total ass for saying that to him. But was I though? I think if ever you were the a-hole for this one, it's justified in that he was in fact being a bad person all round in this situation. I'm sure that can be boiled down to the fact he's 17 and still hasn't come to terms with the fact that the universe doesn't revolve around him. That's got to be a tough pill to swallow, seeing as though his actions haven't made others around him happy. Do I smell some gaslighting going on from the boyfriend? Crazy he just throws out a cheating accusation like that, all willy-nilly. And OP, I definitely don't think you're the a-hole in this situation, since you had some decency and empathy, and you helped someone struggling with grief. He's lashing out because he doesn't know how to deal with his emotions and embarrassment here. That's his fault, not yours. So my vote is not the a-hole, OP. Now in the comments, Ronat Sarangi says... If the truth is insulting to him, then maybe he needed to hear it. You're a good person for helping your brother's girlfriend when she was devastated and emotional, and your brother's reaction shows what he values more in his relationships. Himself, his image, basketball probably, and then his girlfriend. Not the a-hole. Exactly. He's too selfish to see that he made himself look bad all by himself. OP... Your parents are babying him and enabling his selfishness. You did a good thing and don't ever apologize for that. Totally agree here. OP did a really decent thing as is being pilloried for it by his immature brother and enabling parents. Not the a-hole. Your brother seems like he's the type that confuses being nice for romantic interest. On top of that, he doesn't like the fact that he was confronted by how inventive his actions were. If you hadn't got involved, he was probably just going to gaslight her into not being mad with him. Now it's very obvious how crappy he was, and he doesn't like that self-imposed smear. Not the a-hole. If you help someone because their significant other or family refuse to help, they are the only ones looking bad there. And apparently if he believed that, clearly to Cody, romantic interest doesn't mean that he has to be nice to her, since Cody cares more about his friends than her, lol. If he's feeling insecure, he knows what he did was screwed up, or, well, he knew after someone else helped. It could have been any concerned man or boy who came up to her that day, but this time it was OP. Your brother isn't going to have a girlfriend much longer if he keeps treating women like this. This is Basics 101. Be there when she loses her effing pet. Not the a-hole. You were just doing a kind thing for your brother's girlfriend while he was out playing ball with his friends. He can't get mad at you for his own neglect. Also, damn, you had a girlfriend since you were 12? Good on you, bud. 
And OP replies, Haha, yeah, first girlfriend and everything. Plan to keep it that way, smiley face. Keeping the same one forever is a rare thing, but one of my friends did it. I met him in college. We're all in our 60s now, and he's with his wife, and they're happy. Alright guys, I think that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you need a good laugh, please do check out my second channel, Marky2, links down in the description below, or it's going to appear somewhere on the screen here at the end, little bubble with my face on it. As always, a big shout out to my Patreon and channel members, your faces are surrounding me right now and I love to have you guys with me, and down in the comment sections of each and every video, and just knowing that you're always there to support me, it's a humbling and lovely feeling. And rest assured, I do see you, and I do notice your support, and I thank you every day for being here and helping me along this journey. Not much else to say besides that, guys. Um, thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. I do hope that you have a good day, night, sleep. Whatever you're up to, I will see you in the next video, and thank you again. Bye.